Anyway, so here is uh, Joker Folly Adieu. Before we start the trailer, though, Jeremy, what do you, what do you, what, what's your stance on Joker? Todd Phillips, Joker. How do you feel about it? It's. Uh, I need to go back and watch it again in full. Uh, I've seen it three times now. Uh, once in theaters, once uh, during COVID, locked in, and then another time I think at a friend's place. I hope the FBI is listening to this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, You're on a list now, buddy. Yeah. Three times. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> No, uh, I will say the first thing about Joker uh, when it came out were some of the best film memes I've ever seen in that era were yeah. all oh, Joker yeah. themed. It, they were incredible. And just the fact if if you showed any sort of interest in the film, like, yeah, like you said, like there was like this uh, uh, vitriol. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, pre- it premiered, I think, at Cannes. Right. And then all the journalists saw it and they all became very deeply disturbed yeah. They became dis- deeply disturbed by the film, and they thought it was going to inspire real-world violence yeah. from incels. The incel community on Twitter was going <laughs> to... My, that- favorite, my favorite meme is the two, two tickets to Joker, please, with the kid in his AR-15. Yeah. Magic. They're, they're all fedora tippers like me right now. No. Exactly. I, I, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, no, but I, I, I do like the film. It did make my top 10 of that year. It was not one of my favorites. favorites. Um, I think at that time when it came out, I was I was riding the Parasite train. That's kind of dwindled a little bit because of mm-hmm. the, the, the cult status. Or not even cult status, but just like the, the, the fan base around it that has blown it up to being like, oh, this is the first ever Korean picture to ever hit America. I'm like, you fuckers, like, shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But but um, uh, I did think at the end of the day, you know, a, a film like Joker was kind of important in a time when we were not getting movies that were showing this side of life where like a character is like essentially at the bottom of the totem pole. Like people like to like bring everything up into uh, race, class, um, uh, a gender, whatever status. Um, but they don't, they, they seem to like shy away from the mentally ill. They seem to shy away from anything that is like clearly psychologically going wrong with somebody and they, they shove them aside. And this was like not the best attempt, but it was a strong attempt at least into tapping into that kind of element, which I respected. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely it, engaging with the current like cultural conversation yeah. about like healthcare, the healthcare system, you know, what do people like? Uh, what's the character's name? I can't even remember. Joker. Uh, <laughs> just call him Joker. Uh, just call him Joker. Uh, oh, what the fuck is this, this going to bother me? Um, but anyways, but anyways, uh, yeah, it was dealing with those things. I, I mean, I, I like Joker fine. I was definitely not as hot on it as some people. I do think, honestly, something this, a thing that does kind of lower its esteem for me is that it is incredibly derivative, mm-hmm. and uh, and I don't really hold that against it. I, I think people like kind of overstate that sometimes but i mean i'm such a fan of like the king of comedy the scorsese movie like it's so good and this and it's a riff on that that and the that other one the night shift is that the other one yes kind of got a little bit of some elements of that in it as well and um but yeah you know i'm probably in the same boat as you i kind of have to revisit it to really collect my thoughts about it in a more like coherent fashion. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix is great in it. I don't think that's deniable. And it's and a, he, it's, it's he an incredible a, performance. And he plays Arthur Fleck, by the way. Yeah, I yeah, just pulled it up. That's yeah. right. That's oh, right. Arthur remember. Fleck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating this. I'm actually kind of cool. I'll talk about it as we go through the trailer. Um, but I like the fact that they're kind of doing a completely different thing with this movie rather than making a standard sequel that they're kind of just uh kind of like what james wan does for sometimes occasionally like with like a uh, insidious part two how it's like a completely different kind of movie almost different style different tone and i think that they're kind of doing that with this and i uh i'm here for it let's go boys it's so hot here. Baby, baby. Oh. hey fleck you got a joke for us today
So this was that was the thing that was a surprise to me. I did not realize that the Harley in this movie was going to be also like a, a fellow mental patient. Oh, okay. I figured that was probably the case they were going to go around. Uh, but to be fair, though, as well, I didn't know if the, if it was going to be like a straight up follow up to him being, uh, uh, yeah, back in a, in a facility like this, like Arkham or something. Well, yeah, that's what. And I thought she was going to be his therapist. I thought they were going to just do the traditional thing, and they're just kind of completely eschewing that, which right. is fine. Like I don't have a problem with that at all. Yeah, I'm not one of these people. Like this is not the Joker. Uh, Trumming says, I still haven't seen the Joker. Anytime I'm about to watch it, I watch something else instead. <laughs> Honestly, you probably have seen it just through cultural osmosis at this point. Yeah. I mean, so much of it is like, uh, was memed. Like the whole movie is a meme. Like every scene, there's like a meme about it, you know? Uh, Trumming says, Harley as a mental patient makes a million times more sense, honestly. Well, she gets, well, if the real character Harley Quinn gets basically like, uh, what do you call it? Stockholm Syndrome hypnotized almost, and she goes yeah. and she goes crazy yeah we use music to make us whole to balance the fractures within ourselves can i just I'm say nobody. Quick, by the way yeah. um you know i'll i'll give credit where credit's due too for joker uh back when it came out uh smoking was like it was starting to becoming really uncool like you do, you can't you can't smoke cigarettes yes. anymore in movies yes. and like he made it so <laughs> he made it cool wild. again he made it he made, made it remind me of like oh why i miss my college days sometimes too or it's just like <laughs> oh yeah i'm at a party i'm like here i got some marlboros here was let's, yeah i mean joaquin phoenix in general does a lot of good movie smoking yes. he's pretty good at it well he is in real life i don't know if he is anymore but he's right. a apparently he's a chain smoker yeah. Uh, Tremling says, personally, I'd like to go back in time and prevent that character from ever being invented. I despise it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harley Quinn's got weird, a very weird origin because it's based basically in like fetishism of uh, yeah. the guy that created the. Oh, well, who the hell's the dude? The dude from the animated series. But anyways, um, Bruce Tim. Yeah, he's like because he's a hornball. <laughs> I haven't done anything with my life like you have. Cool smoking. Cool <laughs> yeah, smoking yeah. again. Trumming says, be Gene Hackman and drink gas station coffee and smoke cigarettes at 94. I know. He's awesome. Um, so how do you feel about it being a musical? They seem like very cagey on committing to what they're like considering it. Is it a musical? Is it a musical? I've heard that there's only two original songs and all the other songs are like covers. I would Kind of like Moulin Rouge-esque. Right. I would be a little bit more weary if these were actors and i mean you got lady gaga here too like if they were not musically gifted already that's if true, they were yeah. just kind of getting it but they do have some background in doing um uh lots of singing lots of guitar playing mm -hmm. and 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 you know i i honestly I, i'll put some trust in this at the very least you know it's not doing the same thing again exactly but that's that's kind of why i like yeah. it i'm like cool yeah. do something completely different and weird right why not I mean, yeah. you got, like you said, they got Lady Gaga. They got Joaquin Phoenix. He was Johnny Cash and Walk the Line. Yep. Like, they're not slouches. Let's get out of here. I mean, I like, I really dig the aesthetic. Yeah. On yeah. what are clearly fantasy scenes, but they look cool. They look cool. They're treating it like a videographer is filming a Broadway musical right here. You know? Actually, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> what the world needs now is a love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just to live alone. What's changed, Arthur? Well, I'll tell you what's changed. I'm not alone anymore. I mean, I'm kind of in. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm kind of in. Like, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I used to I'm think not, my life. Lie. I used to think my life was a 
tragedy, but now it's a musical. Yes. <laughs> no longer a comedy. <laughs> now it's a musical dramedy. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I like the aesthetic of it. I like the look of it. Do you think I was talking to my wife about it the other night after it came out and we were kind of comparing notes and uh, she had the impression that she's like, I think most of this takes place in the insane asylum. Well, and that's but why, I, well, it, it borrows, sorry, no, uh, it borrows over from the ending, which I don't know if it was fully real or not. And even there's even sequence, sequences in the original where I'm like, I can't tell if, the, yeah, like, I mean, it's revealed, well, but like, yeah, yeah, you don't know what's in his head and what isn't. You know? Yeah, that's, they, they kind of play fast and loose with that for a little while in the original right. one, because they kind of use that as a reveal. I have a feeling in this one, though, the main thrust of this narrative is going to be about the public trial. And that he's going to get off hmm. or they're going to escape somehow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're, Be they're also hinting at all of those Joker lookalikes that people that are like praising him now too. That yeah. Cause be, he's, he's yeah. got a following now. Cause he's like right. a, seen as a revolutionary. That was kind of the one, one of the curious things to me because you know, the Joker was never supposed to have a sequel. They were very clear about that. And I think even the way the movie ends, what the movie is about kind of makes it hard to make a sequel. Uh, because at some point you're rationalizing political violence. Yeah. I mean, that's what this character is. If we look at Arthur Fleck as a heroic figure, um, yeah, he's like an anti-establishment, anti-government revolutionary type. Kind of like a stand-in for um, the romanticized like Antifa types. Yep. Like kind of romanticizes that notion. This is how they all see themselves. As like an Arthur Fleck type person. Sure. <laughs> and uh, so I'm curious how they're going to deal with the politics of that in this movie. Because I feel like it's going to have to be more brought to the forefront. It, it, it's such a weird irony, too, because I do see a lot of those types also resent uh, this trailer and uh, that past movie, too. Yeah, because they think it's d diminishing mental illness. Yeah, and it's just like, uh, you know, I don't know, just... I mean, you can explore these ideas any way you goddamn well please. And like right. people being fucking ninnies and woke scolds <laughs> about everything. You can't please anybody. No. Like he's literally a movie that is about your biggest like bugaboo, which is like health care and mental illness and people getting what they need, etc. And it wasn't good enough. <laughs> like the movie is so fucking on the nose. It beats you over the head with that in the first one. Mm hmm. Like, how can you not, how could they not like embrace it to some degree? Tremlick says, ah, Alan Partridge as the therapist. Yeah. That would be amazing <laughs> if, if uh, Coogan was, Steve Coogan was being Alan Partridge. That's what we should be talking about. Hold on a second. I think that guy's the Joker. This uh, this shot's a minute for everybody, too. Yeah. Well, that's everybody's favorite. Everybody was yeah. talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool shot. It's a clever shot. Yeah. It's cool. So, I mean, we're seeing here, he's still in, she's out. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious what the dynamics are going to be. Is she going to get out and she's going to be the one that kind of reignites the, the Joker's? Like love she's, that she, Joker. Love yeah. that Joker. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I hope he wins another award so I can watch his speeches. Mm. <laughs> he could tell me, he can scold me for stealing milk from cows. That's what oh he used God. his time yeah. for. Remember that? Right. You steal her milk. <laughs> You eat her babies. Yeah, you steal her milk. Tromic says, I need a moratorium forever on twinkling piano keys in movie trailers. I would, I, I normally would agree with you, but I think it works here. I think it works for what they're doing. Is they're trying to do like a whimsical, dark fantasy musical. I'll allow it. Yeah. I'll allow it. Only this time, Todd Phillips. He can't do this again. Because I, if this does well, I assume they're going to get a trilogy. Or, less, or do you think they're going to close the door? Does Arthur Fleck die? Uh, 
it would be more ballsy if they do end it that way but i can also see them doing a trilogy just do you, to you know what the they're gonna side. do yeah. you know what they're gonna do they're gonna do some stupid bullshit to like wrap this into like the robert pattinson dcu or something where arthur fleck is actually not the joker but he's the inspiration for the joker oh god what wait with yeah <laughs> just wait <laughs> I really hope not. And I haven't heard anything like that, but right. it would not shock me. Because, you know, in reality, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker actually fits pretty well in with the world of Robert Pattinson's Batman world. Mm -hmm. Like that character could play in that world. But I don't think Joaquin wants to do that. So they would uh, they'd pass the torch through these movies, maybe. I don't yeah. know. I hope not. Tremick says Batman just kills both of the end. Yeah, he just shoots them. <laughs> Zack Snyder style. Yeah. You think you think Batman doesn't kill fools? Whatever, loser. That was a that was a topic of debate a while back too. Like, uh, I guess Batman killing people again or whatever. I'm just thinking. Oh, because yeah, because Snyder talked about it again every time he yeah on, on gets Joe asked Rogan. About it. I'm just like, who cares? <laughs> if somebody's about to kill you, what would you do in that situation? <laughs> well, yeah, no, I mean, I in some ways, like I understand what people are saying, but I also don't think that they're either they're being kind of obtuse a little bit because Frank Miller's Batman, which is the direct inspiration for Zack Snyder's Batman, like what Zack Snyder does with the character is pretty fucking brutal. Uh, and he does do shit like that. And he, he wouldn't care not to like, that's just the way he is. He's represented as that kind of, that kind of, um, that kind of guy in yeah. those comic books. And that's what Snyder's drawing from. So I was just like, really? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? It's, I can't take my kids to see this. Why you can't watch your kids? Can't watch some fake violence. Let the boy grow up. That's yep. what I say. Let the boy grow up. As long as you know, we we're pretty liberal at my house. We're pretty liberal at my house, but. Mm -hmm.